Hello and welcome to this tutorial series, Get Started Fast with Media Composer for Adobe Editors. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe and I am the lead trainer for Media Composer at MacProVideo.com and my goal in this tutorial series is not to teach you how to edit, but to show you fundamental differences that you need to know when making the switch from Premiere to Avid Media Composer. We're going to cover five main topics for making the switch and in our first lesson, I want to talk about understanding project creation and project hierarchy. Now, before we get into Media Composer, I'd like to talk about Premiere Pro and what happens when you launch Premiere Pro as opposed to what happens when you launch Media Composer. Inside of Premiere, as I'm sure you're aware, when the application loads up, you're brought to a start screen where you can create a new project or open a previous project. If you select the option to open a new project, you'll be brought to the new project window where you can enter information like the project name, its location, and more importantly, the scratch disks where all of your media is going to go to. Now, it works a little bit differently inside of Media Composer. Let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer or Alt and tab for all my Windows friends. Now, something else that I do want to mention before we go on is that all of the lessons I'm going to be doing will be done on the Mac, but everything I show you works exactly the same on Windows and I'll be using both the Mac and Windows shortcuts when they're appropriate. Now, this is the project selection window. Now, we call it the project selection window, but there are a few other things going on here that are important to mention. From this window, we can select projects, create new projects, we can determine where all of our projects will live, and we can set up our user profile from here. Now, something that's different from Media Composer to Premiere is the fact that on Premiere, when you start creating projects, you can really put them wherever you want. You could put them in 15 different locations, 20 different locations. Media Composer is not like that. One thing you'll notice in Media Composer is that it's very rigid in how it likes to do things. And many people say that that's a fault of Media Composer, but I believe that it's one of its strongest assets. Having things set up a very specific way forces you to be organized, which is the key to a successful edit. Now you'll notice that right now I have my project set to go to an external location inside of Volumes Media One Avid Projects. I could set this to be going to a private folder, meaning a folder that's specific to my login on this computer. I could have it going to a shared location, again, a location that's specific to this system, but it's accessible by other editors. For me, I always think what's going to happen if I get that call and I have to take my project on the road with me, I want to have everything on an external drive. So for me, all of my projects live in a folder called appropriately enough Avid Projects, and here they all are, corresponding directly to the project selection window. Now let's talk about project creation. Inside of Premiere, when you go to create your project, you're only asked for some very basic information, such as what you want to name the project, where you're going to save the project to, and then where you'd like the location of your scratch disks to be. Now inside of Media Composer, we don't have what's referred to as scratch disks inside of Premiere. We handle things a little bit differently, but I'm going to talk about that coming up in lesson three. One thing that we do very differently inside of Media Composer is we set the resolution of our project before we start. Now again, many editors that switch to Media Composer think that this is going to limit them in the work that they're going to do. What I like to tell editors is don't think of that as limiting you when you're editing. What you're essentially doing is setting Media Composer up for how you would like to export the project when you're done. What's important to keep in mind is that you're not limited inside of a 1080p 23976 project to working with media that's only that size. You can bring in images that are 4K, that are 720p, that are SD, that are 2K, that are 1920 by 1080, 23976 frames per second. You can bring all of that media in and work with it in your timeline. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that you'll be working in a 2398 frame per second timeline. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that we can actually change resolutions of the project, but we will be limited to that 23976 frames per second. So I could switch from a you know 1080p project to a 4K project, to a 2K project, to an SD project, but the frame rate will always remain the same at 23976 frames per second, and I will not have the ability to change that. Now, if I click on the new project window, you'll see I can enter the new project name and I can choose the format that I would like to work in, or depending on what I'm doing, 
I can even choose a custom project to work with. Now, if I'm going to be getting in and setting specific presets that I'd like to work with, I can actually do that right here from the Manage Preset window. And as you can see, I have a preset set up for Snapchat. Or if you're just doing a one-off project, you can always simply come to Custom, enter the raster dimensions and the frame rate right here, click OK, and you'll be all set to go. Now, of course, that does beg the question, what happens exactly when you create a project? Well, let's create a project for this. I'm just going to create a new project. I'm going to leave all of the parameters exactly the way that they are, and I'm going to call this project Get Started Fast. Once I've entered that information and I click OK, you'll see that it now appears in the project selection window. But more importantly, what has happened, if I head to the media drive, into that folder that I already have set up right here, the location for my Avid projects, you'll now see that if I sort by date, I have a project for Get Started Fast that has a couple of files in it. One is a Get Started Fast Settings XML file, and the other is the Get Started Fast.avp file. These two files are what are basically telling Media Composer the exact resolution, frame rate, and things like project settings for your project. Now, this does bring up another important topic that does require mentioning, and that is when you're working inside of Premiere and you create a new project, the project is just that. It's one file, your project file. Every time you add new bins, new information to it, that one project file keeps getting larger and larger. But you'll notice that it's very different inside of Media Composer. Inside of Media Composer, when a project is created, a folder simply created with two pieces of information or two files that are put into that project, of course, with a folder called statistics as well. So what happens once you actually start working with projects and you start adding bins and things like that? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to come back to the project selection window. I'm just going to choose one of the projects and I'm going to say OK to launch the project. Once I'm in the project, you'll notice that I have four bins in the main root level of this project with a folder containing some more bins. Now, this is the Let's Edit with Media Composer bin. So what I'm going to do is just hide out of Media Composer. I'm going to head back to my Media OneDrive and back into my Avid Projects folder. Now, that project is represented by this folder right here, Let's Edit with Media Composer. So I'm going to double click on that folder. And now you'll notice that I actually have individual files for each individual bin with another folder called appropriately enough old, much like it was inside of the Media Composer hierarchy with those other bins contained in here. This is a huge difference in workflow between Premiere and Media Composer. What does this now give me the ability to do? Well, what I could now do is instead of having to take, let's say, an entire project and send it to somebody because I want to give them a bin or a few bins or something like that, what I can now do is go in and cherry pick just the bins that I want from inside of the project. I can then take those. I don't even necessarily need to zip them. I could just attach those to an email and send them off to whoever I need them to go to. Now, what's important to also keep in mind is that this is just sending the information with the project. It's not sending the actual media itself. Again, we're going to talk about media and how that's broken down inside of lesson three. But what this also does bring up the topic of is project archiving. With being able to work like this, what we now have the ability to do is to get in and we can take projects and we can then organize things down to a bin or a few bins that we might want to just get in and archive just those specific bins. Let's say, for example, just a sequences bin that maybe, you know, a few years from now we'll need to come back and add a few little changes to because maybe it's a project that comes back every once in a while. We can get in and instead of having to archive a project that might be a few hundred megabytes big, we can get in and just archive a few bins that might only be a few megabytes big, which is again a very different workflow than how you might be accustomed to working inside of Premiere. All right, that wraps up lesson one in understanding project creation and the project hierarchy. Now in lesson two, I want to talk about the fundamental differences between acquiring media from Premiere to Avid Media Composer. We're going to talk about importing, consolidating, transcoding, and the proxy timeline. And don't forget that you can get post-production workflow tutorials and industry insight that you need to bring great stories to life by checking us out at avid.com slash mediacomposer.